Uh, we've been working on a, a theme, a subject, if you will, that we've entitled, How Does Your Garden Grow? We've been looking at how God uses this metaphor of gardening throughout Scripture. The first week I shared with you about the first step in gardening is you have to have a space to do it. If our hearts are truly God's garden, we have to give him permission to, to have ownership of our hearts and lives and let him have our space, so to speak, in our, in our lives. Uh, last week, I spoke to you about the second stage or phase of gardening, the cultivation stage. Before the seed is, be, is able to be introduced, you must properly prepare the soil so that the seed is given the best opportunity to grow and in the end be fruitful. As it relates to the garden of heart, our hearts, we need to allow God to break up the hardened places so that the seed can actually grow. After the service last week, Bryce Bono uh, uh, came to me after the service and he said, I think I had a I had a word this morning, something to share, and I didn't share it. And I said, well, uh, you should have. <laughs> Actually, I said some other things, but uh, uh, anyways, he, as a farmer, as a farmer, anyway, this is my best farmer shirt this morning, right? This is my best, uh, it's the best I got. It's all I got. Uh, he was sharing with me about how in farming, Soil gets compacted from, from things riding over it, running over it. It compacts the ground. And he said, the part about that that makes it unable to grow is it, com it compacts so that there's no air and moisture can't get to it. He said, so we have to go in and uncompact it. We have to get it uh, decompacted. I don't even know if those are words. But they have to get it broken up again so the air and water and all the other ingredients can, can make its way to the seed. So uh, thank you, Bryce, for sharing that with me and not everybody else. So I want to share with you the next, the third phase in gardening. But before I do, I, wanna, I want to just share some more fun facts about plants and gardening. Does, anyone, does anybody know where the name, the flower name gladiolus, do you know where that came from? Anybody? Do you want to know? Okay, so it actually dates back a long, 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 long time ago to the Romans, they, they said that their leaves look like their swords, and their swords were called gladius. Gladius sword. I, I don't think I had, yeah, a picture of the leaves right there. They said that, that it looked like the one that they carried on the side of them there, the leaves, so they got their name uh, from there, from gladiolus. Okay. Did you know that strawberries, blackberries, and raspberry are not actual berries? What? <laughs> Say what? Now, don't anybody get mad at me. I shared this with somebody this week, and they're like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Dude, I'm just telling you what I read, right? Well, wow, they're really berries. They're berries. We've always called them berries. They're berries. Uh, whatever. <laughs> By definition, a berry's seeds are inside it. So, uh, uh, for example, a blueberry is a true berry, right? Blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, the seeds, if you've noticed, are on the outside, right? So they're not considered berries because of that. Did you know that based on that definition that watermelons are berries? What? You're messing with me. Did you know that chili peppers are berries? What? 
totally messed with you. All right, number three, last one, last one. Does anybody know what they call a cluster of bananas? What? I heard it. It's called a hand. A hand of bananas. So, so little, little something. When you go to Tops the next time, and the little clerk is, is run around there, and you say, where are your hand of bananas? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Hand of bananas. All right. Some fun facts about gardening. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the third phase of gardening, the sowing part. S, not S-E-W, S-O-W, the sowing part. If you remember, a couple of weeks ago, I said to you that the Lord was impressing upon me a phrase from Scripture that I initially heard these words, so to the Spirit. When I looked it up in Galatians chapter 6, it actually says uh, these words, so to please the Spirit, which is my title for today's lesson. Sowing is a gardening term that describes the process of planting, dispersing, or disseminating seed. The sower is the one who does that. He plants, disperses, or disseminates in some way the seed. This idea of sowing is spoken about in both the Old and New Testaments. It's spoken of in a natural sense. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 12, we read, Now Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. A little bit later in Scripture, in the book of Psalms, it talks about this idea of sowing in a metaphoric way. In Psalm 97, verse 11, it says, Light is sown like seed for righteous and gladness for the upright in hearts. The use of sowing as a metaphoric, uh, in a metaphoric sense is especially found throughout the New Testament. You may remember last week I shared with you the parable about the sower from Matthew chapter 13. In that very parable, Jesus started out by saying, a farmer or a sower went out to sow his seed. Jesus uses this imagery of sowing his seed to make a spiritual point. Bless you. Paul, a little bit later on in the New Testament, borrows this same imagery in some of his letters. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, he says this, I planted the seed in your hearts, Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. A few chapters later, in chapter 9, verse 11, uh, he says this, when we told you the message, meaning the message of salvation, when we told the message to you, it was like planting spiritual seed. Now the Bible makes clear to us that there are three sowers in life. Three sowers of seed. The first sower, as I've read these verses to you, is obviously in reference to God. God is a sower. He sows seed. And in that same passage in Matthew 13 where Jesus gave the parable of the sower, when he's explaining that parable to his audience, he says this in verse 37, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. Now, that phrase or title, Son of Man, is significant. You, you and I, when, if, for those of you who are students of Scripture, when we, when we hear this title, we usually think that it's a way that God's pointing to Christ's humanity. Uh, the two being Son of God versus Son of Man. And usually we think that title is in reference to uh, to the humanity of Jesus, but we need to understood what it what what that would have meant to the people that Jesus said it to. The Son of Man sows the good seed. Son of Man was understood by those who heard it in their day as a reference to no one else but God. It's because of their understanding that was based upon an Old Testament verse in Daniel chapter 7. 
I want to read it to you. Daniel wrote this. He said, I saw the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came like one as the Son of Man. And he came to the ancient days. The ancients of days would be a reference to God the Father. The Son of Man came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him, meaning the Son of Man, was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom, and all the peoples and nations and languages would end up serving him. His dominion as an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his, and his kingdom one that shall never be destroyed. So historically, in the Old Testament, when there was this reference made to God in, in the sense of Trinity, when referencing the Son of Man, it was speaking of the second person of the Godhead. So when Jesus subscribes that title to himself, they would have understood them, him to mean that God sows the good seed. God is a sower, and he only sows good seed. You got that? He only sows good seed. There's no bad seed. Just good seed. God sows good seed. But there are other sowers. The second sower we come to in Scripture is the devil. Did you know that the devil sows seed? On the heels of the parable of the sower, Jesus gave another parable called the parable of weeds. And as he's, de as he's describing or, 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 or trying to help them understand what his teaching means, he says this, the enemy who sows them, meaning the weeds, is the devil. So we've got God sowing good seed. We've got the devil sowing bad seed. The only kind of seed the devil can sow is bad seed. God, good seed. Devil, bad seed. There's, there's no other reference in Scripture that God sows bad seed and the devil sows good seed. God, good. Devil, bad. Got it? But there is a third sower that's spoken of throughout Scripture. I actually referenced this earlier when I said to you, that uh, about the metaphors that, that uh, Paul and Jesus used. The third sower is us. We are sowers. God sows good seed. The devil sows bad seed. You and I, we can sow both. Uh, Paul talked, as I said, Paul, in that refer those references in 1 Corinthians, he says, I planted. That means he sowed seed. I planted. Apollos came along and watered it, and God caused it to grow. But Paul says, I planted. He doesn't say God planted. He doesn't say the devil planted. He says, I planted seed in you. He said, and later on, he said, we came with this message of salvation to you, and it was like we were sowing seed in you. It was like we were planting. Uh, we, were, 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 we were putting out the good news to you like seed being sown in a garden. We are always sowing. Well, you wake up in the morning and you interact with your family. You are sowing. You have a little breakfast. You, you get in your car. You go to work. You're sewing. Uh, you get done with work and you, you do whatever recreational activity you do. You're sewing. You go back to your family. You're sewing again. You're sewing. You're constantly sewing. There's stuff coming out of your life that is being sewn into other people's lives. We sew wherever we go. Now, I need you to please track with me. This is going to feel a little uh, 
uh, disjointed for just a second, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta catch this, right? I want to go back to this phrase from Galatians chapter six. Paul said, "So to please the Spirit." So to please the Spirit. Now, for the last two weeks, I've been talking to you about this, the process of gardening, and we've been looking at it in terms of us and our hearts being the soil. This morning, I need, to sh- I, I, I need you to shift that just a little bit because we are both soil and sower. We're both. We're both being sown into, and we and we there is sowing going out from us. You got that. So there's soil. I'm I'm the soil. God, be at work here in the garden of my life, and we need to have an understanding that we're also disseminating seed out there. Got it. It starts by God looking to sow the good seed of His Word into our lives. Now, back in the days when Jesus was on earth, and He's, and he's having these conferences, these teaching seminars, Jesus was dispersing seed out. The se- he was speaking it. And as he was speaking, seed, if you will, was going forth. Like a farmer dispersing seed on a field. You got it? That's how the seed was sown in that moment. Now fortunately, a lot of what Jesus did got written down for us. So the way the seed gets sown for us now is by giving ourselves to this word. That's how the seed gets sown. Back then, it was through Christ's audible voice. It was through Paul's audible voice, through Apollo's audible audible voice, Timothy's, Luke, all the guys that we read about in the Scripture, they were speaking the word, and as they were speaking, seed was being sown. Today, today, we we open the pages of this wonderful book and we read about what was spoken back then. And as we give ourselves to it, seed is now being sown into our life. You got it? So, if, if it's true that God sows good seed, not if it's true, God sows good seed. It's all He can sow. And this is His good seed. The way that seed gets sown in my soil is by giving myself to this Word. You, listen, if you don't give yourself to this, there's no seed being sown. And one sowing is not enough. You can't say, well, I read that one time. I'm good. You have to keep coming back. A farmer wouldn't say, well, once I planted that field, but I'm never going to plant it again. You can't. That makes no sense. You have to keep coming back and allowing this word to be sown in your heart. All right? You got it? Okay, so... But that's not enough. That's not enough. It's not enough just to give yourself uh, to this word. Because Jesus said, this is what he said, not what I said, this is what he says. He says, the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word, hears the word, and understands it. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. To be able to understand it takes the activity of the Holy Spirit. 
Anybody can read the word, but in order for it to have significance and meaning in my life, I've got to be asking for the Holy Spirit to help me to understand what not only it means, but how it gets applied to my own heart and to my own life. How does this, Lord, how does this work? How, what are you saying to me? What are you speaking to me? We must have both the Word and the Spirit at work in the garden of our lives. He must be at work there in that, in that place. Um, I, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read. But if, for those of you who are taking notes, I'd like you to write down 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 14, because it is abundantly clear in that passage that Paul says it is the Holy Spirit that helps us understand what God has to speak to us, right? We need both the Word and the Spirit. Now, if, we are going to, if, if we're not going to do that, okay? If we're not going to participate in this, if we're not going to allow the seed to be sown in my life, if we're not going to invite the Holy Spirit to help me understand this, let me, let me explain something to you. Then you should, you'll all understand this really good. If you don't sow good seed, if a field, the field across the street right now that I'm looking at, if that doesn't get sown good seed, what ends up happening with that field? The weeds grow up. Half of the, 90% of the battle of a garden is dealing with weeds. And it's no different in our lives. If you're not sowing the good seed, weeds are going to come forth. That's how it works. If you're not doing something to till the land, to prepare the soil, to sow the seeds, then you can expect. We've all seen, we've driven around, oh, that used to be a farmer's field, and now it's just, uh, you know, it's a goldenrod pasture. You know what I mean? It's just overgrown, it's gotten out of hand, there's, there's tree, little trees growing in it, and whatnot. If you do not sow the good seed, weeds are in your future. That's what's going to happen. Weeds are coming. You cannot fool God. You cannot fool God. You're either sowing good stuff or there's weeds uh, that are going to come forth. Right? So here we go. When we are giving ourselves to God and His Word, His Spirit, we are in process of sowing to please the Spirit. That's what we're doing. We're in the process of sowing to please the Spirit. We are sowing into our hearts what pleases God. Hello? It got really, really quiet. We're sowing into our heart what pleases God. But I said to you a moment ago, we are both soil and sower we are being sown into and we in turn are sowing into others now here's here's your takeaway for this morning listen listen you can only sow what you grow you can only sow what you grow I know today we go to some outlet, some place, some store, and we buy our seeds there, right? We go there. Jody, in just a minute, I'm going to show you some of her seeds stuff here. She goes to Fedco Seeds, and she buys her seeds for her garden. But that's not how God originally designed it. Do you know that? If you go back to the garden in the very beginning, there's no Home Depot. There's no mention of value. <laughs> Tops, dollar store, any place you might go and find seed. No mention of that. That's because God had a plan. 
In the beginning, it tells us, in Genesis 1.29, I give you, remember, remember, God gave them a little head start. He planted the garden. Uh Uh-huh. He planted a garden and brought man and placed him in the garden. And he said, here's how I did it. He said, I give you every seed-bearing plant. Can you say that with me? Seed-bearing plant. I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, every tree that has fruit with seed in it. In other words, inside of that thing were the seeds that you would take to sow at a later date. You got it? It's all in there. You take the, you grow the, you grow the uh, squash. You open up the squash. There's seeds there in the squash. You take the seeds out, and now you save those seeds so that you have something to sow. You can only sow what you grow. You can't. There's no store. You can run to and say, hey, can you give me some, uh, some squash seeds? No. Nope. You sow what you grow. Seed-bearing plants. God's Word says that if you sow, if you sow in such a way as to please your sin-sick, fallen human nature with center at the self, then you will produce fruit in keeping with that, and the seeds that you will end up sowing to others will be from the fruit of your life. Did you all miss that? That's how this thing works. So, did you know that Paul labeled the packets of seeds that you could sow out of your flesh? Did you know that? It's right in the Bible. He said, he said, if you, if you, I got some seeds here. He said, uh, here it is. Here's one right there. If you sow immorality, you will reap. That will be the seeds. If that's what you're giving your heart to, your life to, that's allowed to be sowed. That's what you end up sowing to others. There it is. He says, if you've got envy and stuff like that uh, being sown into your heart and life, that's what you end up, that's what you, what you grow is what you sow. How about hatred? If you've got your heart, all your, you know, you're in the process of sowing into your life and you're sowing seeds of hatred, that's what you end up sowing to others. Jealousy. Here's a pack of jealousy right here. Seeds of jealousy. You get to sow those to others. Discord. Discord. Everybody, you're all mucked up about everything. There you go. That's what you get to sow to others. You got it? Yeah. What you grow, that's what you sow. I am amazed at people. They spend no time sowing to please the Spirit, but they want everything to turn out just perfect. That's what they want. Oh, pastor, please pray. They haven't spent... They haven't spent a minute in God's Word. They haven't spent a minute asking the Holy Spirit to help them, but they want life to be perfect. Yeah, Yeah, baby. Well, why isn't the Lord doing this? What you grow is what you, what you, that's what you get. That's what you get. This is not rocket science. You can't sow crap and get something good from it. You can't. It's not, it doesn't work that way out there. And it doesn't work that way in our hearts and lives. It just can't be done. It can't be done. I'm always surprised. People are like, well, I didn't see that coming. What? (laughs) 
Are you crazy? Did you know? Did you know that Paul labeled the good stuff? Yeah. Yeah, he did. You know what? He said if if we're allowing God to sow his good seed in our life, we're going to have some love coming out. There's some love in here, and there's some love going out. I'm growing love. I'm sowing love, right? He said you got, you got joy if you're allowing God's word and his spirit to do its work in your heart. You're going to be, you're going to be growing joy. I got some joy in here. I got some seed going out. You got it? Yeah. I could go down the list. Joy, peace. Oh, everybody wants peace. Oh, we love peace. We love peace. Ah, I'm not doing anything to sow it in my heart and life, but I like it when it comes around, right? <laughs> peace. Whoa, that's awesome. How about patience? I got a, I got a big pack of seed for patience. <laughs> I had a big subject right there. I'm, so, I'm allowing God to sow patience in my heart and life. What, what do I end up sowing? I end up sowing patience. These are the seeds. These are the seeds God's looking to plant in our life. And then as those things grow from those plants, those, that fruit in my life, I can get some seeds out of there and share that with some other people. Yeah, you know the rest. Self-control, faithfulness, kindness. I knew I spent too much time on that. Anyways. <laughs> seed, listen. Seed begets seed. That's how God set it up. See, what we want to do is we don't want to have to, to mess around with all this seeking God and and, you know, allowing him to mess around in our hearts and lives and allow his seed to get planted. What we want to do is get out of the store and just get what we want. That's, right. That's not how this works. <laughs> what you grow, you have to sow. You don't grow it, you don't have it. You have to allow God to be at work in your life. If we don't give God permission to be at work in the soil of our hearts, weeds will take over. Weeds. 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 I, somebody, somebody was telling me about this hogweed. Have you ever heard of this? Nasty stuff, I guess. You get touched with it, it can, can wreck you. Weeds take over. If we don't ongoingly give ourselves to the seeds of God's Word and His Spirit, uh, Weeds. It doesn't work in the natural if there isn't, you know, farmers right now are spending, uh, dare I say, millions of dollars. Millions of dollars in seed and fertilizer and paying on employees to go out there and just dig around in the dirt. Millions of dollars. But but they've, they've come to realize that if they do not make that investment on the front end, when fall gets here, they got squat. They ain't got squat. They got nothing. They're looking for a return on their investment. And I'm telling you here this morning, the same is true in the spiritual. Your investment, my investment, in seeking God wholeheartedly, there's a return on that. There's a return on that. You get, to, you get to have some fruit that is of the kind you enjoy. God sows good seed that leads to good fruit. The devil sows bad seed that leads to bad fruit. We have the potential to grow and sow good seed or bad seed. Nothing will ever change that. God's heart for us is that we be good soil to receive good seed in order to bear good fruit that leads to good seed sowing in others. This is what it means to sow to please the Spirit. Giving Him ownership of our gardens, giving Him permission to cultivate our hearts, 
receiving the good seed of his word and spirit, and sowing the good seed of God's growth in our lives with others. I'm looking at a lot, I'm looking at a lot of, of gardens right now. A lot of gardens all over the place. And as I started out, remember, the question is, what does, what does your garden grow? What does your garden grow? What are you doing to, to, to make sure that there's good fruit being born and good fruit with seeds in it to sow to others. Listen, we all have bad days. I understand that. Our flesh, no matter how much of God's good seed, is still very intact in any one of our lives. But I, I have to say to you this morning, uh, God's plan is, is that we would be sowers of good seed. Amen. That's his heart. That his seed would take root in us. We would continue to, next week Pastor Josh is going to talk to us about the next phase and that we would be tending to that stuff and doing what we need to do to make sure that we're the sowers of good seed. I'm going to invite you to stand right now. I have one last thing I want to do. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't ask you to stand, but I asked my wife, I said, do you have some seeds that I could plant here this morning? She said, yep. You all know I have a little shaking thing going on. She gave me the smallest <laughs> miniscopic seeds that you would have ever seen in your whole entire life. I can't even seed these things, right? Yes, would you help me? Would you come up and help me, hon? Come on up and help me. That way she can do it just the way she wants to do it. <laughs> All right, so a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago we, we took this soil and we, we tilled it and we made it so that it would be able to receive the seed. Now I'm gonna ask Jody if she would go ahead and begin to plant those seeds in there. And in a few, just a few couple weeks, we'll be able to see. Look at that, I can't even see them. They're so small. You need me to shake it? I can shake. I know how to shake. There they are. Seeds are going in. They took all of them? Okay. Took the works. All right, now you do what you want to do there with those. Yeah. Very good. Well, we're going to see what comes forth from that, and we'll update you about that here in the next week or so. But I just want to pray for us this morning. Yeah, pay attention to that. There you go. Beautiful. You know what it is. Nice. Lord, here we are again this morning. And there's been some seed sown here this morning of your good word, Lord. I'm praying that it would find fertile soil here this morning. That each of us would, would take it upon ourselves, Lord, to, to do what we need to do in order for your garden to look like you want it to look. I pray that we would each give ourselves to your word and your spirit. We would be we would be eager to know what you have to say. <laughs> eager to know what you have to say. We'd be eager to have the Holy Spirit help us to know what all that means, Lord. So I pray that as, as the week unfolds in front of us, that the good seed of your word, the good work of your Holy Spirit will be at work in all of our hearts and lives. For truly, Lord, we, we want this place called Pioneer Christian Fellowship and the people thereof, Lord. We want, we want our gardens to look like you've actually been, in, been around us. You know what I mean? You, you've been in the house, Lord. You've been at work. So please, do your good work in us. Go with us as we go from this place. In Jesus' name I ask.